everyone. Welcome to a super episode of ARG Presents. I am Amigo Aaron, joined by a man who, much like the subject of today's show, was a failure in Japan, the Brent. I would actually, I'd be an anomaly in Japan. Why do you say that? Because <clears throat> I'm a huge fat guy. They don't have huge fat guys over there. Yes, they do. They're called sumo no, wrestlers. No, their sumo guys are more muscle than fat. <laughs> oh, no. There's plenty of fat on these bad boys. So, if you joined us last week, we spun the wheel and we made the deal. And this week, we'll be playing games on the bizarre and unusual Super Graphics yes. console. And here we are seated in front of the... From what I understand, the Japanese bridge in France. And there's a reason for that, which I'll get to later. I believe they connect the two countries. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is why you failed so fully in France. So what did you know about the Super Graphics console, Brent? I knew it existed. Yeah. Oh, actually, let me back up. I didn't know this actual system existed. Yeah. Uh, but I knew there were a lot of uh, Turbo Graphics spinoffs. Which oh, I guess, man, ain't that the truth? Which, gravi which this is included, too. Yeah, but I yeah. didn't know a whole lot about this. This is an unusual console, and I'll be, I knew of it, you know, and I've even dipped my toe in the pool of getting one of these a couple of times. Stupidly, I might add. Yeah, this would be... Well, no. but then it's got its good points and its bad points, which I'll get into. Uh, but this, I think this machine is often misunderstood <clears throat> in terms of what it was, uh, but... Uh, it what it became is sort of a, a an absolute uh, flopperoo yeah. uh, over there. So we're going to get into it a little bit, Brandy. Uh, I've got a few factoids here on this bad boy. So uh, this thing uh, was released in Japan. It's one of those consoles. They didn't release it. It escaped. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so get this. And this is while we're in front of the Japanese Bridge of France. This was released uh, December eighth, nineteen eighty nine, and apparently this got a, a a very very limited release in France. I, in May of nine, that's mind blowing. Yeah, and and uh, if you think about it, anything in de uh, dealing with this particular console is a limited release. Um, so uh, the original price of this thing, uh, Brinster, in eighty nine, three hundred U S dollars, or in today's wad, six hundred and twenty U S dollars. That is insane. Well, I mean, it's not mega huge, but it's pretty big. No, dude, that's in that's insane. Yeah. So. Uh, of course, this was, a lot of people don't know that this was actually originally going to be called the PC Engine 2. Uh, this was a, this was effectively uh, the follow-up to the PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16. Now, the TurboGrafx-16, tremendous uh, uh, console that had limited success outside of Japan. Yes. Uh, in, a, in the States, it had a, a cup. it was a distant third. It, yeah, it was uh, always behind, behind the leaders. Yeah, behind the, you know, your, your, uh, your other, yeah, Nintendo and, and Sega. And, uh, and, but in Japan, it did real well. And so, uh, they decided that this, they were going to uh, come up with a, uh, a machine that would be sort of like their Super Nintendo or Genesis. So this was coming out to compete against those. Now, the funny thing is, do you remember a while back we covered the PCFX, sort of like yeah. mini PC thing? That was sort of the, the natural successor to the Turbo Graphics, but this was sort of the console. This, successor. yeah, it was a still, yeah. Now, when the roads branched, this was one of the branches. And sure. now, like Brent said, there are tons and tons of PC yes. uh, engine. There's your duos, PC, you know, all these crazy. I, who knows if you keep track of all these you things? You can't. It's impossible. So, <clears throat> Brent. How many units total worldwide? Do you th and of course, worldwide being the yeah, few France in France and, Japan. and all of Japan. How many do you think they shipped this thing? Uh, shipped or sold? Sold. This is the whole kit and caboodle. How many did they get rid I of? I can't think. I can't imagine they sold more than say twenty-five thousand. Well, they did. <laughs> they sold seventy-five thousand of these bad You're boys. You're kidding me. No, seventy-five thousand of these bad boys were were sold. Oh man, that's <clears throat> a lot of disappointed people. Yeah. Um, the. Uh, the interesting thing about this uh, machine is it, it is back, and this is why it's not, it's why it's still sort of collectible. It is backwards compatible, fully backwards compatible with the Turbo Graphics slash PC Engine. So you can take those Hue cards, if you'll recall the uh, the PC Graphics uh, or the PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics used a, a, a hard card, a card, yes. a Hue card that would stick in the machine. Like I said, I've got one. I've got a Turbo Graphics and it's tremendous. I, and the games for it are really fun. Uh, this takes those cards, plus it takes a special, uh, like, card that only this system uses. 
Uh, and the, it's sort of like a bigger version of that card. Now, I mean, it looks the same, but it's just a more expansive version. Right. These cards were expensive. <clears throat> so they were more expensive than the Hue cards. Hue cards not that bad. These more expensive. And so the games available for this system sometimes could run up into the $120 range. Insane. Uh, and that's in that's back in 89. Okay, so <laughs> so that that's that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, of wad right there. So this thing ran on a Hudson Soft HUC 6280 and really a lot of what's internally available in this machine um, is very fairly standardly simple and comparable to what's in the original uh, version of the of the of the machine. So like you're going to get similar everything. But what they did jack up, they added a graphics chip and they, and they there's four times as much memory in it. Okay? So that's what you've got. So what does that mean? What that means is you're going to have uh, the ability to have an extra scrolled layer yep. of graphics and you're also going to have all that access to all that extra memory and they've got a video system involved that allows them to um, overlay these extra they basically can join the graphics chips together I guess it to me it reminds me a little bit of the of this of the uh, 32x yeah. where they can actually you know they added basically extra stuff that and it kind of melded it in uh, to the new stuff so you would expect with all this extra power that the games this thing are rock and roll solid, right? Well, it's, that depends on your perspective. This machine only saw uh, five legitimate releases specifically made for this machine. Correct. Okay? I'm going to go through them here. You've got 1941 Counter-Attack. Yes. Okay? You've got... Uh, Which was an arcade game. Aldenus. You've got Battle Ace. You've got... Uh, Diamakai Mura, a.k.a. Ghouls and Ghosts. Which was an arcade okay. game. And you've got uh, Meadow King Granzort, which is sort of this uh, robot, scrolling robot fighting game where you're a robot, you fight stuff. Uh, Less exciting <clears throat> than you think. It reminded me, you know, it's funny, I've got a, I've got a game uh, for the, uh, I've got a game for, I think it's the uh, uh, Sega Master System. I think it's one of the Alex Kidd games. And it, this game is sort of reminds me of that. And actually, it wasn't just me that thought that. I saw a couple other people talk about this machine. They also mentioned that. So, but I mean, it, 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 it's I, I I played all these games. We'll get into that in in, in a minute. So, uh, this machine, uh, much like its predecessor, had one joystick port. <laughs> in the in the tradition of the in the tradition of the season, they put one joystick port on it, and it is weird looking. Yeah. It looks like that someone flopped the top off of an engine block or something. I mean. <laughs> It's got these weird bolts on the top that are just, but they're molded. They're not real. Yeah. It's got, uh, um, it's got the same nutty peripheral slot in the back that the Turbo Graphics does. So this thing is compatible with the Turbo or the PC Engine Turbo Graphics, whatever you want to call it. It's compatible with its uh, external CD player, right? So, so here's the thing: you can play 700 plus games on this machine if you get into the old. CD stuff and the Turbo Graphics stuff, and if, if you you've got the money to pay for the extra stuff that you'll never use, right? And then, and then you've also got the five games you can play. Now there were a couple additional games that came out there, uh, Darius Plus, and uh, there was it's, I think both of them were Darius games that were made for the PC Engine, but you could actually play them on this, and then you would get additional like layers of stuff. Right, you get yeah. you'd get a bone. It would it's add on to the game. Right. It doesn't actually change the game. You just get more for the game that you've got. Uh, the turbo, the uh, the uh, uh, the turbo pad works on it. The multi tap works on it. So basically, all the stuff that worked on the old one worked. There's even a little switch on the back that, uh, for compatibility purposes, uh, that you can flip. Uh, but uh, from what everything I saw, the compatibility on this was pretty much 100% to the uh, turbo graphics. Yeah. So what happened to this thing? What was the scoop on this? Uh, from what I could gather, and I, I you know, I'll, it's funny. There's a lot about this machine, but it's all the same information. Yeah. So there's a little bit. There's a lot of a little bit. And what, from what I could ascertain from everything I read and heard, uh, what happened is they 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 were cruising along in this thing, and they tried to rush it to market uh, to be to get a foothold, uh, get a jump on the uh, Super Nintendo and the Genesis, which they had to do, <clears throat> and they did. Well, it didn't matter. I didn't. It, it, it was. I think that was the right business call. Yeah, the funny thing about this, you know, seventy-five thousand. The, the 
the, the, the uh, PC Engine was very popular. And it's surprising to me that this thing flopped so completely. Now, if you, even if you look at this thing as an upgraded PC Engine, okay, that, and that's sort of the way it was meant to be looked at. I mean, this was going to be their next, their next uh, uh, chapter in their consoles. But I mean, if you if you look at it as just an upgraded PC Engine, it's not bad. I mean, it's it's okay. It it, it gives you a little extra, you know. But the no, of course the problem is, the, the their initial offering of five games probably none of these games rock the world. And I don't know if you played all these games. You know, I thought about doing an episode where we just played them all, but I thought no, we'll save some because we can always come back and because there's some there's a couple of choice ones in here. Please don't make yeah. me come back. Yeah, well, we, may, we may come back, but. I did play every single game, you okay. know, and I and I and uh, I did not play them. All. I did, I played them all, and and I didn't play the Darius ones that that were upgraded, but because I, I, I played it, and I, I've got a Turbo Graphics, and I've got an up, I've got the uh, expansion, the the card that has all the games, right, the the, the multi card, and so I've played a lot of games, and I and there are only a few instances when playing these where I thought to myself, there's no way that the original PC Engine could yes, have done this. Now that's a problem. Now. Not to say that they're they could definitely do it. There are parts of these that are are you're going to notice that are things that the Turbo Grace couldn't do, and they involve really. I saw two basic things. Oh, three. I saw three things that the Turbo Grace couldn't do that this can. Okay, and that's just a layman's perspective. And here they are. One, uh, an additional layer of graphics. When they yes. put it in, you can tell it makes uh, it is d- graphically pleasing. To have that extra layer, but I mean, it's not a deal breaker. Like if it wasn't there, you wouldn't be like, "Hey, where's my layer?" They, but, didn't, I mean, they didn't do anything special with the extra layer. Right. Uh, secondly, uh, is the amount of guys on the screen at once. The amount of sprites. You know, uh, you could have a lot of guys on the screen, and I would assume more than you can on the PC. Now, I've played a lot of PCs because there's a lot of guys on the screen, but this one, I saw instances where there was so much stuff going on that made there there was that. And thirdly. Maybe. I saw some transparencies that I don't recall seeing on games on the uh, uh, PC Engine uh, that were uh, like sc- sc- transparencies where there were things scrolling behind them. It was a pretty good effect, and I don't know if you could have pulled that off. Uh, something like that. And these are, and I'm sure uh, someone that's an expert in in the area of graphics could probably point out dozens of things in these five games. But these are the things I saw having played them. Otherwise, the speed of them, uh, the, uh, the 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 control. It, uh, none of that struck me as anything that I thought would be particularly uh, impressive. Especially you know. since the, the games I did play still had slowdown. Yeah, I mean, it, there were still instances of slowdown. Did you, I must, of course, we, we both had to emulate this. Yes. Did you, do you recall what you used to emulate on top of your head? No. I, uh, I didn't run into any... It started with an M. I didn't run into any serious slowdown on what I was playing, but... I also wasn't very good at most of what I was playing. Well, so there the, was that. <laughs> the stuff, the slowdowns that happened weren't emulator slowdowns. They were, they were, they were pro, uh, part of the game. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. there you go. So, with with that uh, illustrious background in mind, and I, I will say just to close us up, the uh, Super Graphics did not do well against the Genesis. This time, by the time those systems got up and rolling, this thing was already dead, gone. Yeah. You know, it had it had left the it had left the building. They had additional things that were supposed to come out for it. And one thing I want to mention before we shut down, they had this thing called the Power Console that was supposed to come out. All right? I was reading about this on the wiki. It was a, cock- a cockpit-sized controller, and it attached to the unit. So it actually attached to an expansion port on, the, on it, and it would have added an eight-way joystick, four action buttons, a flight yoke with two triggers, a throttle, a jog dial, three mode switches, an LCD panel, and an LED indicator, and four additional controller ports and a numeric keypad. Yep. I was actually going to mention that for my game. That uh, would have been it, something. It, it, it was the size of a... Con- it was Steel Battalion Junior. Yeah. Uh, if you recall, the Steel Battalion controller that came out for the uh, the Xbox and PlayStation at one time. Uh, this was... Highly prized. This was... It's a huge, huge controller with the, with the flight yoke, like you said. Yeah. Uh, that probably would have sold poorly and would have been way too expensive, well, but I've got, looked incredibly awesome. So I've got the price of this thing. The estimated price, the suggested retail price was going to be 59,800 yen. Tra- oh my goodness. Translated into dollars for us dumb Americans, 551 US dollars. In today's money, 
Eleven hundred and thirty-seven dollars. That is quite a peripheral. Holy even, cow! Even the steel potato, <laughs> the Italian thing, didn't cost that much. Holy cow! But I mean, you just hear all the stuff it did. It's got everything, man. <laughs> <laughs> this thing can replace everything in your house. You can store your beer in there. You can microwave your pizza. It did everything, man. I love to have seen what that looks like. I thought that was that oh, was quite a Oh, have treat. you not seen it? No, I didn't see it. So, with all that said, Brent, we only had a few games. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, that's something. So we only had a few games to choose from on this on this wacky contraption. Uh, and it's funny, Brent actually changed his pick part of the way through, didn't you, Brent? I did. I was going to. You want to? You want to go uh, ahead and explain yourself? Well, yeah, I, I had initially said I was going to do uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. Right. Which looked fantastic for the system. Uh, it, it is supposedly the closest to the arcade that any of the consoles got. And it, it, I did play it. It is quite nice. But then I stepped back and I said, you know what? We're covering the super graphics. Yeah. You've super. got you got you got to dig deep and you got to find exclusives for this bad boy. Yeah. And that's what you got to play. And that's what I did. You mean, and, I mean, and, and, and I chose poorly. And so, well, someday maybe we can go back and do arcade. We'll do an arcade version of this console because that there be they have two arcade <laughs> uh, things, so we, yeah. we can do that. It's got just enough to cover it. So, uh, with all that said, uh, I will lead the dance this week uh, as as best I can. So, the game I picked was a game called uh, Aldiness. Aldiness. You want to help me on this? Nope. Aldiness. Are you kidding? Who me? knows? All Dines, whatever you want to call it. It's a uh, wacky uh, shooter that was on this. In fact, this is your horizontal shooter offering yes. on the machine. Uh, this was uh, developed by an outfit called Produce, with an exclamation point at the end of it, uh, published by Hudson Soft, and released in Japan February 22nd of 91. So wow, that's, that's super late into the I was going to say, uh, as I recall, this, like, this, this thing was shipped in 89. So you had, it's not like all these games are available at launch. This was the one you waited two years to get. Yeah. That's, I didn't notice that until this exact second. That's astounding. <laughs> so, um, this, believe it or not, this actually got re-released on the PlayStation Network. I've noticed the PlayStation Network gets a lot of these obscure well, things. The, the, okay, let's back up a little bit. All right. It, it, it's because it's a Hudson Soft game, yeah. not because it's a PC Engine game. Uh, these re-releases, they came in a huge bundle. I don't even count it as a as a re release. Oh, yeah? yeah, no, it, it's it's yeah. I don't know anything about it's that. It's a cash in. So the full title of this game, Brent, uh, I'm going to call this Aldiness. Is that is that how we're going to pronounce it going forward? I'm Al- gonna call it, Aldiness. I'm going to call it flighty shoot yeah. game. So the full title of this is Aldiness, <laughs> the mission code for Rage Crisis. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's right, the mission code. For Rage Crisis. What a name. Boy, when you've got, I love Japan. When you've got a Rage Crisis, Man, you got to give it a name. You've got to have the mission code of your That's bone. Right. That's for sure. Um, so, the uh, <laughs> the plot of this game, uh, in, get, get this, in the year 2020. So, we got one year. We've got less than a year before this goes down. Oh, well, you know, I, I can see it. In the year 2020. Earth suffers from a devastating alien attack. And they actually show you this attack in, the, in an opening cutscene. Uh, and it's not very... It's the remedial cutscene at best. It basically shows a scrolling runway with some planes on it and some crap falling on them and making them blow up. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It was weak, brother. I thought to myself, are you kidding me? I've played plenty of Spectrum games that had much cooler openings yeah. than that. Anyway, Earth is suffering from a devastating alien attack. A large mechanical planetoid suddenly emerges from space and attacks the cities of Earth without reason or communication. That happens a lot to us. With all defenses annihilated, and you know you're in trouble, when the UN corresponds with NASA to make a powerful space fighter known as the SWA-402 Ortega, which was a hilarious villain in one of the Mr. Science Theater. But the fighter fails to end the war. Oh, no! So that didn't work. One of the Ortega pilots, known only by his call sign, Fox A, the H for Aaron, is killed in action. Oh, crap. I didn't read that part. <laughs> his bereaved girlfriend, Hiroko, soon discovers his involvement in the Pandora Project, which houses Ortega's successor, the SDE-2000 or 201, Aldenus. As the invaders attack the Air Force housing, the nearly complete Aldenus Hiroko hijacks one of the ships and throws herself into battle, 
in hopes of getting revenge. That's right. You're playing Fox A's girlfriend in this. Now listen, if you if you play this game, none of this will mean anything to you. Zero. And it means nothing. I've watched the whole game all the way through and played it, and there's no mention of any of this stuff. There's no dialogue at all except for the weird start thing. Try try start now or whatever it says when you hit the button. Uh, but the uh, the cover does have uh, the ship, and I think it's also got the girlfriend on it. So that's your backup for this thing. So what is this game? Well, this game is sort of your standard uh, horizontal shmup, okay, with some twists. All right, and I will say, the calling it standard is not fair. It starts off, yeah, and you're is. just like, okay, this is your this is your normal thingy, all right. And you, you and drop, it is. Well, no, it's not. There are, and I'll get into it. The first thing that I struck me when I when I started to play this game is that overall, it had a the very first level has a very dull look to it. Uh, the well, it's uh, at the it's at the air base. Well, it's just it's just it's not that attractive, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, this I've played a ton of, of great uh, uh, shmups on the uh, on the Turbo Graphics and Blazing Lasers that comes to mind. It's just a tremendous. Game. There's a lot of good ones on, on the on Turbo Gravis. And I looked at this and I was like, oh, this doesn't seem like it's any great shakes. And graphically, this is not going to blow your socks off. I mean, honestly, it's for the for this to be one of the banner offerings on the on the uh, on the uh, Super Gravis, it's not anything to write home about. And I think that is therein lies the the rub on this thing is that if you're expecting a quantum leap in graphical uh, offerings on this, you're not going to get it. No. Uh, because it basically it's the same basic bear homie which is more memory and, and an extra graphics layer now that doesn't mean going forward they could have done some awesome stuff with it you know what I mean but so if you but if you're looking right away for just some incredible incredible upgrades you're not going to get it and I think that probably sunk the machine right there uh, I mean in my well, opinion no because this mm. game came out after the right but I mean system was way you're right dead. but I'm talking about right across the boards I yeah. mean uh, even if you look at a game like the uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, uh, uh, it's it looks great. You know, it, it was I mean, graphically impressive. It, it's, it, but I mean, it doesn't look like it doesn't look that far beyond what the original. No, no. See, I disagree game. with you there. I think and it is the anomaly, by the way, it, of these games. Super Ghouls and Ghosts, or, or uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, I guess, for this system, yeah. was by far the best looking game. Okay. Yeah. Because it had huge sprites. It had a ton of color. This game. It's like they wanted to do something impressive and then gave up halfway through. Because while some things look great, other things look incredibly blah and and, and, and low detail and rushed. So I, graphically, this game does not do it for me. It does not look like a next gen at the time console. Well, there you now. I don't know. How, I'm guessing you got probably as far as I did, which was I was nowhere hideous at this. It is incredibly hard. Yes. And we've played some hard stuff. This thing, I was so... And I would just start over and over and over, and it was just brutal. I slogged my way through the first level, and it was uh, the first stage, and I was like, my God, I'll, it's so hard. That said, and, and what Brent said is mostly true, but you have to look deeper into this game. I if do. you can get past the fact that it's brain meltingly difficult, it is okay. I, and, and we don't usually agree on difficulty, yeah, because our our skill levels are obviously different for different, different games. Different stuff, yeah. Uh, but this game was was ridiculous. It was frustratingly large. difficult and, at the and, beginning, and I didn't have any codes or anything to to make it easier. So to and, give you an idea, folks, your very first power up, the very first thing you see, you you destroy some si ships and you get your very first power up. Yeah, it's a gun. That shoots at 45 degree angle yes. up and 45 yes. degree angle down with no forward shooting. Yeah, now that that that's not the best gun How to start do you off start with. Start at who says you know what? What's the best way to get them introduced to this game? Oh yeah, let's just not let them shoot you're, straight. You're, you're not wrong, <laughs> and and so you're, that was a mistake. That, and, and like the whole first level was sort of like I wouldn't have started the game like that. Well, and, you had to to fit the story. No, I mean, I mean, I would have made it. Um, you don't have to start with that power up, for God's oh, sake. Oh no, yeah, that was or that dra bad it had to design. Be that drab. Uh, the uh, uh, when you start getting into this, you you realize that there's a there's sort of an interesting dynamic in terms of the power up system. I mean, it it, it is and it isn't. It's the same basic deal where you get the different colored power ups to do different stuff. 
Uh, there's, like Brent said, there's the god awful lasers, there's a forward laser, and you eventually will get these lasers that sort of curl around the screen. It's all very, it's stuff you've not, you've seen before. It, it's and the same it, basic. It, as you go in, you eventually can pick up these additional, like, satellites that will follow you, that will float yeah. around, and depending on <laughs> how, if you hold down your one button, you can just determine how the the uh, formation they sort of fly in. And so yeah. what they, and so that's interesting. Something else that's real unusual. But I mean, it's just your options. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's it. That is the way you beat this game: is to have this. You have to. Yeah, have. you have to have these satellites. And you have to be good with them. Uh, something else that struck me as real strange is that in a lot of games where you hold the button down, you'll power up your laser, and it's this mega shot. Yeah. Right. In this game, you power up your laser, and then when you let go of the button, the laser just powers down. It doesn't <laughs> shoot, and that's because it's not a laser. It's, it's a sort shield. of a forward shield. So. When Brent says you've got these 45 degree angle uh, guns, that doesn't necessarily mean you're boned as long as you're proficient with holding up the shield button for stuff that comes towards you. It's, it's, um, it's a system that a lot of, I've read a lot of reviews of this, and a lot of people say, there's people that just say this is too hard, screw this. And then there are some people that just say you, it's a game you have to learn to adapt to. It, that's, and it's a, in that angle, in that aspect, it, it's unusual. In that area, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's the learning curve is steep. You well, know, even a gradient like that, you eventually can. You, you I mean it doesn't and, start off that ridiculous. And I well, I, well, I agree. Any any uh, good shoot 'em up requires you to play a lot to get good. To you know, you can make it a little bit farther, and you remember patterns and that kind of stuff. Yeah. My problem with this game is the the patterns it expects you to learn. Like for example. The first real threat in the game is a, a ship that comes out and shoots four heat-seeking missiles. Yeah. And it shoots them above your plane and below your plane. So the heat-seeking part of it is it trailing to your plane. Two above, two below. I had the hardest time figuring out how to just get past this one section of the game. Because... I would, if you go up, they just follow you up and kill you. If you go down, they just go down and kill you. Even if you destroy one set of the <laughs> missiles, because you can't destroy both because of the power-up you have at the time, no matter what power-up you have. Uh, it makes it so you have to basically dash forward. That's the only way I've found to get through them. How did you, did you remember how you got through them? Basically, uh, you've got to dash and then work around them, and you can also shoot them. You can shoot yeah, them out of the but air. But you can't shoot them both. So whatever shoot, whatever set you shoot, the other hit you. So uh, the way I was getting through it was dashing, f kind of through them, which means I had to shoot, kill the ship that shot them, that took multiple shots, and that one little section is about thirty seconds into the game, and yeah. it took me like five tries to figure out what I was supposed to do, at least to get me through it. It was so frustrating. Well, it was so frustrating so early. It, it uh, well, yes. It the learning curve is a cliff. I mean, you just it, it is it, holy you, cow. you die instantly. That said, I managed to get eventually. I could get to the to the uh, end, first boss. The end boss. That's where I got. And the boss, the bosses in this game actually are quite awesome. And that's one thing. And this is another area where maybe your your original TurboGrafx couldn't cut it. These bosses are huge. They're big. Takes up the whole screen, and he's and they're adorable. But in fact, the original boss is pretty cool. He sort of the ground shakes when he's coming out, and then I was like, man, I thought I thought, honestly, I thought the emulation was screwing up. Well, this <laughs> thing's this thing's like a huge like screen sized tank or something that rolls out, and then once it gets in front of you, it unfurls, and it's actually like a huge like monster like robotic dinosaur. monster, yeah. and you fight it. It's really I like that. I, I thought that was pretty neat. I thought I, I went through and watched all the inboss. They're all pretty cool. Yeah. The very end, you fight this very bizarre face guy uh, when you to ultimately beat beat the aliens. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, the weaponry in this, I mean, I guess if I was going to pick a game that this reminded me of the most, it'd be maybe like an R type or something yeah, of, of the of that yeah. satellite. Uh, the power up system is pretty. It's sort of similar. It's it's unusual. And something else that's unusual about this game is just say you. As you get onto the levels, the other levels are far more interesting looking, and far more uh, unusual. I agree. In that it's almost there's almost an exploration element because or it, there are parts of the game where the whole uh, screen, uh, the barriers move around, and you, and you've got to sort of maneuver in and out of the barriers. It's very unusual. Uh, you get to an area where there's like a, a, a real deep uh, multiple screen. 
scrolling. This should have been the first level because it's the most impressive in the game. It's uh, and it's scroll there like you've got a level of, part of the level above you and part below you, and it's there are multiple planes scrolling at different speeds. It's pretty. It's a pretty graphically. It it's is not something impressive. I haven't seen before. Oh no! But it's something that's. It looks better than most of the game. Yeah. Um, we should touch on the sound and graphics now. I want our music. The sound, the actual, uh, the um, audio, the the, the uh, GPUs. No, the actual, like the digitized, you know, get get ready. Oh, things. It's not good. It's I was garbage. surprised how poor it was. And again, I'm going to go on the assumption that it was condensed in quality for the ability to store it on these U cards. The music on this, this thing does not have any other uh, musical chips than the original Turbo yeah. graphics. But their Turbo graphics could do a pretty mean song, and I think the music in this is pretty good. It's okay. I think I think it's it's good and it's arcadey. It's to get your pulse going. Uh, and I I, I I find you didn't like the music that much. I it, it was, it was really okay. Good. No, I, no, it was not really good. I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I like that. I love that kind of sound, almost like a Koinami. You know how when their arcade games have that kind of dun, 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 that staccato computer noise sound. I just, I kind of dig it. My and problem is has it. <clears throat> I've heard it before. Well, I'm just, it, it's basically the music from Castlevania. Well, hey, listen, that's not too bad. But. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if this was, it, it was a ripoff. It was a ripoff sound. It sounded so much like a Castlevania game that uh, uh, I don't give it points for that. The uh, here there were a couple anomalies that I and this I have seen these spread across a lot of Turbo Graphics games. The Turbo Graphics, a lot of people, I mean, everyone emulates. Now, I've, like I said, I've got one. And until I had one, I didn't understand this. The Turbo Graphics, the joysticks have built-in turbo. Right, they've got yeah. switches on them. And of course, a game like this, I got that sucker turned off. In an emulation, I've got it turned on as well. You know, I got because you need it. However, if you have it turned on, you can't use your forward yeah, you shield, can't do it and here. so that that's one of those things. So what does that mean? Well, it means you're going to be hitting the button a lot. Let's just put well, it that. Well, I mean, way. That, I mean that's that's yeah. shooter game. Well, I know, but I don't I don't like it. <laughs> if you're going to have to, that's one thing that bugs me about all these things. You know, uh, overall, I really do think amongst the five games you have to choose from, this is a, a pretty de- I'd say this one probably is somewhere in the middle of the pack. You know, in terms of the, in oh, terms of the games it's offered. second, second best. Oh, do you think so? Yeah. I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I like this more than. Uh, then uh, 1942 is a 42 or 41. I, that was I think that one is a little more. It's certainly more colorful, and it's a, it's also a, a something I'm more uh, comfortable with because I've played it in the arc, you know the arcade. Uh, this is a bit, but this is a game that like is going to require uh, you to dedication to really sit down and learn. And yeah. as you get into those uh, the later levels, I mean you're really getting into some pretty crazy stuff. And that's when you those crazy wraparound lasers and stuff they come in handy because they're hugging those walls. You know, um, a, a very unusual game, uh, uh, for sure. Uh, any parting thoughts on this one? Um, I, I don't think this game is, is special enough in any area to be special. And that's unfortunate, because the uh, overall feel of what it could have been... I, you know... Aaron said, "Oh, the later levels are a lot more spectacular. They're they're, they're more spectacular. And I'm not gonna I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna say they're much more. And you know what? I agree with that. But at no point when I played or watched, because, like I said, I I couldn't get past the first level, and that's not like me for a game like this. Normally, I will stick with it until I get past something. Um, yeah, you I, you you have much more success with a lot of these shooters than I do. I, I, I just I couldn't." I was so bored. It was frustrating to me. It, it, it yeah. was, uh, you know, after I overcame the first <laughs> thing with the missiles uh, and the, the first big hurdle in the game, um, I, I was just spent. Yeah. And then I just, you know, I, nothing else really caught me up in the moment like that. I just died over and over. Not for me. Uh, I think there are much, much, much better shooters out there with much more to, uh, uh, to offer both graphically, uh, sound-wise, uh, with interesting power-ups. I don't think this game did anything special. Yeah. I didn't find really any reviews on this thing of, of any of any consequence. There just wasn't a whole lot out there for it. I did look it up on eBay. Uh, on eBay, you can get the uh, just the card, just the Hue card. You can get it for around $90. Uh, 90 you, Yeah. The uh, the boxed version of this, if you, were to, if you want the boxed version, you're looking at around $250. 
And if you want to, I saw some people selling sealed copies for around 330 350 bucks. No chance. Well, I mean, that's just, hey, listen, it's rare. You know how that goes. And I'll get into what the console costs after we're done. Now, we did get a, a, a user uh, review on this. Our good buddy, Graham W. Vepke, writes, Well, I was excited for this game when I first had the chance to play it a while back. And boy, was it a letdown. It's quite an unforgiving shooter, highly influenced, in my opinion, from Gradius and R-Type, we mentioned that, and with the usual one-hit and your dead gameplay. Power-ups uh, aren't that effective, but the game has at least tried something unique with, in, with the energy shield, but it still left you vulnerable above, below, and behind. That's one place where the lasers come in handy, Brent. That's, that's why I would say those things aren't totally worthless if you know how to use the shield. Uh, the graphics are fine, though. That's not what I would call great for the system with the collision detection. That's true. I should have mentioned that yeah. the collision detection is... Uh, I didn't know if it was emulation. That's why I didn't say anything. Uh, the most important gameplay aspect for a shooter, it's horrible. The boss battles are okay, but if you miss the weapon to kill them or you die, you're pretty much in trouble. Oh, if you die in this game, it's over. Yeah, you're screwed. Just restart. There are horizontal shmup games on the PC Engine that are just as good, if not better, 6 out of 10. for the I group. think that is incredibly fair. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say I'd say 5 or 6 is, a, is, is about par par for the course on that one. So, Brenny, uh, we turn to you. And you had, you picked, like I said, you picked two games this week. And so this was the second game that you chose when yes. you changed your mind. So what do you got for us? I picked Battle Ace. Oh, boy. It sounds pretty good. This, this system did have good names. That's I'll give it that. Point. Battle Ace. How can you not go for a game called Battle Ace? You didn't go for it. Ah, that's true. <laughs> um, but I eventually came back for it. Uh, Battle Ace was a system launcher for this game. Uh, it came out in 89, uh, last day in November of 89. Sold for about 6,500 yen when it was released, which was about the average price for a game uh, around that time. If you go for the, if you look far and wide on the internet, this game barely exists. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> really hard to find any solid information about this game, and we'll go into a little bit of why here in a second. I want to take a step back though. Something we never do on this channel, and we really need to. Uh -huh. And I, I sort of blame myself. We never talk about the box art to these games. Very rarely, yeah. Okay. I, I want to step back for a moment and take and talk about the box art of this right. game. Battle Ace has interesting box art. And the reason why is the front cover is just this huge space scene, right? Yeah. And you have a guy sitting in what looks like a F-16 cockpit. But it's cert the plane is certainly not an F-16 cockpit. Yeah. It's a jacked up super Because juice. it looks like if you took the nose of an F-16 and shoved it back into the into the rest of the plane, yeah. and the plane kind of expanded and let it, let it get pushed back in there, and then the rest of your plane looks like an F-16. So it, 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 your, your plane on the box art has empty space around the cockpit where the plane kind of goes up beside it. I thought it was a very interesting visual because you it's never... Co it's cool. It's too bad you can't actually see that in the game because the plane, right. actually, it's a pretty good looking ship. It's a very interesting looking It looks ship. like, if you ever watched, if you ever watched the old uh, uh, Star Blazers, the old, uh, the old uh, aircraft carrier in space, it sort of reminds me of something you might see launched off that. I, used to, I was a big fan of that back when I was so, a kid. So that's what you got on front, and that's going to draw you in because it looks kind of odd but also familiar, yeah. which is a great technique for your box art. Just look at it on the box because you're never going to see it in the game. That's right. That's the problem. So, so now you've it's got your attention. You go over and you pick this bad boy up, and you and you see in your battle lace. All right, and you flip the case over, and you have the intro tunnel. As obviously a static image of the intro tunnel. Uh, that is just a tunnel. It looks like the thing you launched the Vipers out of a Battlestar it's a, Galactica it's a, it's a, or, or Buck Rogers. And that is the only in-game screenshot you see. It takes up the entire back cover. Good move. And because of that, you don't even know it's a screenshot. Yeah. It, it's just a tunnel. And then it says that it plays on the on the super graphics, and then it says it's up by Hudson in two squares at the top and bottom, respectively. Even back in my youth, if I flipped the game a box over and there were no pictures of the game, yeah, that tells me something. 
That tells me I was wondering where you were going with this box. I'm thinking, you're right. That's exactly what I was just thinking. It's like when they don't show you any game footage, hmm. That triggers hmm. something in the old brainer. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they weren't even nice enough to say, look, here's like a scene from our cut scene. No. You know, at least then you go, oh, maybe that's ingrained graphics. Yeah. This has nothing. They have no cut scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you're right. Uh, what is this game? Aaron, have you ever played Top Gun for the NES? I have played Top Gun. Okay, have you ever played Afterburner? I have. For the I have multiple played Sega systems or in the... And okay. G-Lock. I've played all that stuff. Okay, so so you've played Battle Ace before you played Battle Ace. It is, there are similarities. No, there the, aren't similarities. The plot's a lot more wacky. Than, I mean, the actual the actual missions are much wackier I was say, than plot? After. Well, the missions and stuff in Afterburner, are, you're, an, you're an airplane in that. This uh -huh. is, you're more like a spaceship in this. You do all kinds well, of crazy sorta. stuff. Sort of. So, this is quite literally an in-cockpit view where you play Top Gun for some of the levels, and you play uh, uh, some kind of wacky space version of Top Gun in the other levels. It is an in-cockpit view where you are basically on rails. You can move left and right, but it's really just to dodge. You're perpetually yeah. going forward. Uh, your two buttons are uh, shoot with your machine gun laser gun pistol thing or shoot your missiles when you're locked onto something oh i guess technically you can shoot your missiles when you're not locked onto nothing it just goes they just go away it's funny when i first started playing this i didn't know i could shoot i just thought i had to use the missiles for everything and i was like man i can't get anywhere in this game i was yeah. like oh i should have tried the other button <laughs> i'm an idiot <laughs> uh so the most interesting part of this game by far is in the middle of your screen you have what is basically your x and y axis in the middle of the screen and when you move left the targeting for your the the vertical line moves left with you and when you move up and down the horizontal line moves up and down with you and you use these this targeting system to lock on to far away enemies so if you can get the crosshairs of these two lines that move whenever you move <clears throat> over an enemy, it will highlight them and you can hit your button and shoot a missile off. Otherwise, you have to wait until they get close to you and shoot them with your machine guns. That part is awesome. The targeting in this game in that aspect is really fun. I don't know if I'd go with awesome. No, it's. I, I thought it was really fun. I, I wouldn't go with awesome. I would go with like uh, it, it's serviceable. How about that? Well, the fun th what makes it really fun for me <clears throat> is when you've got a lot of enemies coming in in formation, yeah. like an up, like like three across, for example, and you take your line and you mark them all, and then you start hitting your missile button and you're shooting off multiple missiles on these locked targets. That was really satisfying for me. I really enjoyed that. And the machine gun aspect of it, when the enemies are already so close that you have to shoot them with a machine gun, they're on the screen for a split second. And they're, they're there and they're gone. And they usually come through, they shoot a missile or two, and then fly past you and they're gone. And I guess they just go back. Their job's done. They're, they just leave. So that is the entire game for the, the, the first level. Uh, you can lock onto missiles, shoot them, shoot them with machine guns when they get close, dodge the missiles that come at you. Uh, you can, you know, kind of... Uh, barrel roll your plane, sort of uh, uh, like uh, afterburners, by taking the stick from one extreme to the other real fast, and you'll kind of roll. It you, has, feel, you feel like a big man. It, you you do. It it, it's, a, it's a fun, because it's pretty smooth, uh, it's, so it's kind of a fun thing to do, but it really serves no purpose, because yeah. it, it doesn't dodge <laughs> it's missiles. It's not like Star Fox, where you need to spin and no. stuff. It, yeah, the lasers don't bounce off. You just spin, and then you can't control yourself, and a missile hits you, and you die. Also, one shot. One shot kill for yeah, all Why don't you get stuff. into that part of the game? That's where I've got the problem. <clears throat> well, <laughs> so you've got this fun premise, right? You're shooting your missiles from a dip far off distance. You're machine gunning when you get close. That's it. That's the whole game, folks, for seven levels. Yes, some of the levels later have things that you dodge. Yeah. Uh, some things, they have aspects where... Uh, 
uh, they have basically you're using the force and you have to dodge these walls out in space. Now yeah. I don't. I love my favorite bits the space laser gates. You're in space. Why yeah, would you just, fly through just, these? Just fly up, man. There's also there's also some parts where you have to fly through like ice rings and stuff. Yeah. It, Again, you're out in the, in the air. Why would you even bother? But even if you have to do that, I mean, you didn't do that in Star Fox. But I mean, and granted, I'll grant you, Star Fox is not. Oh no, in this, the same. This is in the same stretch as Star no. Fox. But I mean, technically, this was supposed to be the competitor for the machine that runs Star Fox. Yes. You know this. This right here. I mean, if I may just jump in for a moment. Absolutely. <clears throat> This game was a, is a, first of all, the, the uh, heads-up display is, I never like these things that are solid. It's too, it's right in your face. It's right in the middle of the screen, these big lines. Can we make them at least a little more aesthetically pleasing than that? That, it just, it's, it, I, I know what they do, but they, it just, I don't like having them right in my face. You could do something else. Make I actually don't see, mind that. Make them see-through or something. Oh, no, they're, they're, they're super thin. So I, I don't like That it. doesn't bother me. That bugs me. Secondly. Okay. Your machine, your uh, awesome. We talked about how awesome the ship looked. On the this box thing, art, this thing is made of like paper mache. If yeah. you get shot one time, you're down. And it's not like you just get killed. You've got to sit through this agonizing explosion scene over and over and over. Where it, once you get shot, your whole screen sort of turns red, and you hear like a meh, meh, and it starts vibrating, and you're like, "Well, man, I took one. The first time I got shot, I thought I took one, and then you." Can keep flying for a while, but then eventually all your instruments just explode and you die. Yeah, and, and it's by infuriating. A while, by a while, he literally means like ten seconds. Well, not that long. Five no, seconds ten, at least. I, it, it feels longer every time it happens because <laughs> you think, "Am I supposed to struggle? Am I supposed to pull up? Yeah. Am I supposed to recover?" From You're this? right. Ten seconds. I just. <laughs> it's a ten, it is ten seconds. It's too long. When you die, it's frustrating enough when you die. But then you've got to sit there and watch yourself slowly die for 10 seconds. That's a kick in the pants. And this game isn't good enough to merit that sort of action. No. The, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the actual combat of the game, it, it's funny. This reminded me of two laser disc games. It reminded me of Cobra Command, the, the heads up display. And so we know that's a laser disc game. And the missiles coming at you look dead on like the missiles coming at you when you play the behind the plane view in Mach 3. You know, the, it's like a, it's like a, uh, yeah. you see the missile, you just basically see a round thing coming up with some flames coming out the back, you can't see, and it just, they shoot up, it's that shtick, and you've got to shoot the missiles or dodge <laughs> them, and since this game's sort of on a rail, you, you can, I mean, you are dodging-ish. I yeah. mean, when you play, you've played Afterburner and it's sequels. Absolutely. Like, one of my problems with that, with that game is that when you, when you play it, the can, of course, you see your plane, and it's it, it looks wonky to see this plane doing these maneuvers. It's just like this looks dumb. This took that Top Gun approach to this, but it's the same basic thing. And I mean, in this game, you're going full bore forward the whole game, the same speed. So there's no yeah. like, there's no elements of like a, a, a of a even a light flight simulator. I mean, you've got no. They take it, up a good chunk of the screen with this control panel. So I mean, can we get something out of this? Can we do anything? You know. The locking mechanism is okay, but it's not great. I mean, when you lock one in other games, like cool animations of the lock coming in, the thing maybe the reticle will spin around and stuff. In this one, it just barely it makes a little dot, you know. And then you lock on. The missiles aren't in other games. Missiles fire up and they look cool. They sort of they come down and they shoot out and streak out. And this one, there's just some puffs of smoke. The missiles look kind of dainty, you know. It's just graphically. Like you can't tell me that this can't be done on the on, on the PC engine. When I first fired this game up, I thought this is slightly better than NES quality. It reminded me. I mean, I've seen some stuff with Coleco. That's like, I mean, I, I, listen, this well, is bad, but come I mean, on. but the, the, this is listen. Every level they change the what's under you, which is irrelevant. They just change what it looks like, and they yeah. change the color of the sky. And then some of the enemies of the day. That's a, I mean, it's, there's no great shakes in terms of what they change. The, the, it's it's yeah. I mean that that's the other thing. Uh, where you are, there's multiple locations, and they're all crap. Well, there's like an ice ocean, and there's like a lava place, and there's but there's all there's all of it is nothing. There, it's true. There's no, it's not like you're flying over a city or something. I mean, it's something really cool with like big ta spires or mountains, like big tall mountains. I mean, you don't right. get any of that. You go into space a little bit. And it's know. all repetitive as heck. Yeah. And the levels are long. You know, all that said, though. Long. They are. 
it, I didn't hate this game. I didn't. I mean, actually, I, I was way better at this than I was at the one I picked. Oh yeah. I, you know, and I could like I could go for I'll go a couple levels. And it does have bosses. Yeah, and the bosses are weird. And the bosses are, are interesting. They're weird. Oh, they're interesting. Fighting a boss in this, because in in this game you just move your reticle around to shoot the boss, and you have to sort of be precise. The boss all, the boss must get in like. Uh, uh, he must be getting a match your speed and just go backwards. I, I, something else that occurred to me. It's not like the boss is hovering around you or flying. He just locks onto your location, matches your speed, and flies straight backwards and shoots. That's their that's their mo. <laughs> not a good move, boss. Uh, but you know the boss battles. I mean, eh, so they're okay. They're again, they're not any great chicks. The boss battles in my game are much more interesting looking. That's for sure. Yeah. And I will say both games have hideous endings. I, 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 I.e., they have yeah. their endings just they just sort of end. It's like thanks. Sucker. So both about the same length, you know, and you know you're talking about thirty five yeah, minutes if 40, you don't know yeah, you know, on, yeah. yeah. The uh, uh, this is a launch game blows my mind. It doesn't actually it you see what happened to the system. It doesn't blow my, my mind. mind that much. Um, so this did get some reviews out. Oh, real quick, let's talk about the sound. It's garbage. So this got some reviews. It's not out, great. Out in the wild. Uh, from Power Play Magazine and the Games Machine, and the Games Machine was in the UK uh, uh, in the early 90s. So these were like after the fact. Well, um, no, in the early 90s. Oh, in the year, okay. 1990. Well, yeah, but this came out in 80 something. 89. Yeah, I was gonna say that's well after the. No, no, no. This, I mean, this was at, at in the time reviews. All right. Uh, it got a 79 out of 100 and a 75 out of 100. That is way. Too high. Well, that's a C. It's a C average game. I would put this on the l- very low end of, of of this. Yeah, I mean, this could almost be a high end D average game. No, th- this is this is a five out of ten at best. Well, th- see, this, this is so this you're is, failing this one then. Well, no, I don't look at it as great. This is an average game at best. That's what I mean. It's a it's a it's a it's your basic C or Minus. D plus game. Yeah, it's. <clears throat> it's uh, but as a launch title and something to show off your new shiny new weird looking system, it's a big old ass for that. Yeah, there are rumors uh, yeah. in the research I, I discovered. There are rumors that this game was so widely produced mm-hmm. that it outnumbers the systems. <laughs> Like ET, and it is reflected so in the price that you can find them for today. Yeah. If you wanted to bring this bad boy home, complete with jewel case, the and the game, four bucks. Yeah, wow. Uh, I'll be tempted to get it just on that. On the, we should mention the way these boxes are. The boxes have like sleeves that that go over the C, the CD, a cut case, which also has its own like title card, and then inside that is a thing that holds a U card. They're actually pretty nice little they're, yeah they're the, pretty fancy they're jewel cases especially designed to hold the game yeah yeah i mean <laughs> you just no sold that uh, oh, they I, looked okay they, you would buy this just for the art you love the art uh, i don't love the art that much so i mean 12 bucks and you're taking home the pristine uh you know everything's there yeah version of this game and um that explains I, why you were so surprised uh, at the price of mine yes i don't think i would eat Four bucks if I own the system, I would get. You know, if I own the system, twelve bucks, I would buy the game. You know, the the, the ultimate indictment, but, that, that, but only because of completionness. Yeah, the the, the ultimate indict, indictment of this game was I, I had played my game and I'd seen yours. I was going to play it, and I literally went into the my family room and it turned on my Turbo Graphics and started to look for it. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Can't play this on here. That's how bad. Because that's like I just looked at it like ah, that should work. So yeah, that's that's sort of uh, it's sort of a letdown. Brilliant. I believe we had a review for this one as we well. Did. Didn't we did. We did. Let me have it. Let me uh, have a quick look over here. Our good buddy Graham sent us in another one here. Uh, Graham writes, prior to the game being selected, I made a bet with someone uh, that someone would pick the game I had never played before, and Brent delivered. When starting Battle Ace for the first time, it reminded me of an afterburner cross with Space Harrier type game with a perspective influence from Wing Commander. That's a you'd think that kind of uh, meshing would be awesome. It's not <laughs> for a super graphics game. I was this. I like how he says that for a, like there's some kind of precedent with super graphics that makes them games better. For a super graphics game, I was disappointed with the graphics. It was very sparse, like a C64 or Atari 1200 game. 
And the sound wasn't that good either. Gameplay yeah. is fairly simple. Two types of weapons. Use the HUD to find the enemy and navigate and fire. Wish you'd pick 1941 Counter-Attack or uh, <laughs> Ghouls and Ghosts instead, but at least it's unique on the small number of games available in the system. Six out of ten. I'm going to agree with Graham on that one. And I should mention here, as we as we shut the door on the uh, on on this particular system, uh, you can get this console. Uh, it's not the most expensive thing I've ever seen. Uh, you can get one for 350 bucks, and you can actually get one a little bit cheaper if you find a deal. Uh, uh, this is on eBay. You know, I've seen these go more. I've seen these go for less recently. Uh, like say the two hundred seventy dollar range, or even a little bit less. But I, I suspect that these will be uh, uh, much like everything else. They've gone up, up, up. I mean, there was a time where these things were not that big a deal, and yeah. they did make seventy five thousand. So it's not like they're super duper sparse, right? But they're they're not like something you'd see every day. Now, if you want to get a boxed version of this, you're going to be paying somewhere uh, in the, around the around the four hundred dollar mark, give or take, say eighty bucks. You're up in that area, three seventy to four eighty. Somewhere in that ballpark, uh, you know, um, it's a rare machine. It, this, I look at this one a little bit like a, it's it's sort of like the next level up from like the Pippin, right? Right. The, the Apple. Uh, it, uh, that's a curiosity, but it only had a few games released for it, and it's not. It's no great chase to own one to play it. The thing that this has going for it is the fact that I mean, effectively, you are buying a a, a newer PC engine, that, and that's that the only reason way to buy can play it. these four or five uh, yeah. four or five games. No, no, no great shakes. Now, I'll tell you what is some great shakes, Brent. What's that? The it's the wheel. Let's, oh. Let's fire this sucker up. So, what do we add this week, Brent? Ah. Uh, you don't even know, do the you? The Emerson Arcade. That, oh, you do know. The Emerson Arcade 2001, Brent. The Emerson Arcade 2001. We're really getting into some weird stuff here. We've got I like some, it. We've got some crazy stuff on the wheel. I so, like fire it. this sucker up, man. Weak spin. That was a weak spin. You're a weak Eric. man, my friend. All right, now I can't what tell what that is. Can we you... got the Emerson RK 2001. Oh, okay. Why is it with us putting something on the wheel and immediately spinning it's your, it? Your, 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 your wheel spins are weak. It's, 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 it's that was I'm... tough. So we're gonna go. We're gonna step weirdly into a realm that I've got. I don't have no idea. I did look all these systems up to make sure they had emulation. That's all I know. So they. I, I, I know this Zippo. This is gonna be wacky. Another wacky one. So I know Zippo. Uh, I want to, of course, thank our good buddy, The Dunk. I believe he's in the chat for uh, the awesome backgrounds and intros. Yes. He's some kind of uh, uh, savant, some kind of genius of graphical uh, master. You know, he uh, unbelievable. Also, I want to thank our good buddy, the the one and the only Bark Bit. Yes. Who has written us, who has uh, provided us with a closing credits role. And it's music. so nice. I like it. Yeah, it's it's good, so nice. It's good stuff. Uh, if you need to touch base with myself or the Brent, you can reach us at argpresents at mail.com. Mail spelled M A I L. In case you write M A L E in there. Because we are mail. That's a whole different site. You don't <laughs> want to go there. No, yeah, that's a good point. Who we got with us in the chat today, Brent? We got Picard. We got Geo's Lake. Uh, Pixels at Dawn. We had a lot of people I had to take off a little bit early, but I want to get up to their names here. Uh, Jason stopped by. Angus Arthur. Uh, free lunch. We had Amiga Bang make an appearance. There it is. The baloney music. <laughs> Whenever Brent gets lost, that's what comes Picard, up. Picard, Duncan Styles, Steve stopped by. Uh, Necronom, of course, made an appearance. Good crew. Good yeah. crew for uh, Neville. Don't forget about Neville. You know, I, I know you're young, but back in the old days, whenever, the, whenever, you have a, whenever you'd be watching a network and something happened, like somebody broke a camera or something, they put these screens of it and said, like, we'll be Please right back. Stand by. And they play this music, like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and that's sort of what, I, whenever you go into that film, all I want to do is just put a sign in front of it that says, <laughs> Brent's brain has stopped working, or we were experiencing technical difficulties with Brent's head. And then the music plays, and you play your you provide your own tune. We'll I love it. So, well, I guess next week, oh, I should mention, one last mention I should make. Uh, uh, we announced on Amigos uh, just a few days back that myself and the boat, and Brent will be involved in this in, a, in a capa some capacity as well, have started another show. This is a monthly show, and it will be the Coco Show. The Coco Show. Now, we both had Coco you know, growing you up. You know Coco Show is already a thing on YouTube, right? No, it's by, not. By a comedian. No, we're taking We're Not for color computers, it's not. We've taken it. It's ours. Well, it's a done deal. But if you search Coco for Coco Show... show Hey, listen, you're, you're, you're getting, talking to the wrong guy here, right. buddy. 
So it's a done deal. The Coco Show. And we will be looking at stuff on the classic TRS-80 car computer slash Dragon 32. Now, we've had some... We've had some good fun and success with those uh, particular computers. Well, they're great computers. Yeah, they are. This will be a monthly deal. So basically, once a month, we'll get together, play a couple games, uh, have a good time. Uh, it's all games all the time. We're not going to do hardware stuff or anything. That's not our bag. We're just going to do some game, sweet Coco action. I'm looking forward to it. I'm already doing some research right now and planning my next uh, video maneuver in that, in that area. So join us, won't you, for the Coco show uh, at a time to be announced. It'll be awesome. So... That's all I got, Brenny. Any parting thoughts? Da uh, bingo. That's it. We'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat talent. Until then, Excelsior. <laughs>